Buckingham Palace, NBC <laughs> senior international correspondent, Kier Sidney. Kier, um, you know, uh, I'll just say, I, you know, I grew up in the 70s. I remember what the 70s looked like uh, in Britain from afar. I remember the Sex Pistols. I remember God Save the Queen. I remember the protests, the shock, the punk movement. And, you know, the monarchy uh, under constant attack. And then I saw a clip from outside of Buckingham Palace yesterday. People, I'm sure, uh, the same age as Johnny Rotten at the time. And they were all outside. And what were they doing? They were singing upon hearing the news, God save the king. Uh, it is remarkable this, this monarchy has uh, withstood uh, Hitler. The punk movement. I, of course, <laughs> joke about that one. But, yeah. but, but they, they withstood personal scandals from uh, na the, the now king and have endured and endured. And it seems uh, more beloved than ever. Yeah, and it's reassuring today, uh, Joe, to see while there is all of the grief, and we'll talk about that, Mm -hmm. and all of the shock, frankly, despite the fact that she was 96. It's reassuring to see the constitutional process kick into gear, if you like. So, for example, uh, as you'll know, uh, the British courts are act on behalf of the monarch and for the first time this morning in the in the courts, uh, they, the justices have been called uh, to do justice on behalf of the king, uh, not the queen. It, it is that moment where we say the queen is dead long live mm. uh, the king and, and so you have that part. there are so many aspects to this you have that mm. happening and then you have the crowds behind me uh, gathering and as you mentioned uh, joe people of all ages uh, people of all political beliefs as i walk through those crowds there are people kind of standing slightly a, a distance away uh, just in, in in quiet somber reflection and people are having different experiences i have to say uh, one aspect of this for me this morning was just uh, clearly uh, we're busy right now this is a big story uh, in our work uh, and yet every now and then there's a moment where i just stop and just the queen's dead uh, mm. uh, just as you do when you lose anyone and and, and it's trying to take that in uh, and, and sometimes it, it just gets you here uh, and I suspect that will be how uh, people will feel for some time. I just, I just want to show you, Jonathan was uh, looking at your uh, newspapers there. I just want to show you some of the newspapers uh, here and, and uh, almost all of them printed in black for, for morning. Uh, front page of the sun here, uh, we loved you, ma'am. Uh, the front page of the mirror, uh, you know, newspapers struggling really honestly to find the words. Um, the front page of the mirror simply Thank you. Uh, the front page of the Daily Telegraph, which is a, a, an old-fashioned broadsheets newspaper, so as you can see, it's double, it, it, it's, it's uh, all in black, and the picture uh, spreads right across the broadsheet. And then they have this quote, which is a quote from the Queen when she lost her husband. Grief is the price we pay for love. And, and people are grieving uh, across this country and, and uh, across the world. And, and that, I think, encapsulates this split screen between the private and, and, and the, the, the public side of royal life. But all of that constitutional, all of that constitutional talk, if you like, and all of the conversations that we will inevitably have about our different, different systems and, the, and how imperfect they are and different kinds of democracies and how we can learn from each other, all of that is good to talk about. But there is also this aspect with the Queen herself, isn't it? Uh, isn't there? And, and it's hard to comprehend that she was standing on that balcony just a few months ago, celebrating 70 years on the throne. And that picture of her appointing Prime Minister Liz Truss this week, doing her duty just days before she died, is, uh, is just uh, quite extraordinary. Uh, she was... She was the queen, with all of the royal paraphernalia and pomp and pageantry that surrounds that, yet she was also a working woman who, who kept working until her final days. She was a queen who led this country and actually the world in many ways, uh, who, who was with this country uh, and the world through the Second World War, uh, and she stayed at her post until the very last moment. Yeah. It is a... It is a what she leaves us in death from her life is a deeper understanding about what duty and service really means. Yeah. NBC's Keir Simmons, thank you. Those headlines are absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much.